I'm now coming to the end of this series of presentations, and I'd like to share with you what I think are the important takeaways from the series of sessions. So the first takeaway is that the forecast is always wrong, where always is in quotation marks that it is the probability of any deterministic forecast of what will happen over a period, not just at the end, but all the ways in between, the probability that forecast represents what actually happens is very small. Other things happen because there's variability, first of all, because the world changes, there's new technologies, new competitors, uh, economic good situations, bad situations, new regulations, whatever, things happen and the future is not what the single forecast might be. That's number one. The second is the complementary aspect that since it's wrong, we ought to recognize the reality when we do our design and we do our calculations as to what is the best solution. And otherwise, if we don't recognize that, we get a wrong valuation from it and we get the wrong answer so that you need to take that into account. In particular, we need to do it because of that phenomenon, that fact of the flaw of averages. That is, if you calculate the value of the system using the most likely parameters for it, the average demand, the average cost, the average use, and so forth, then you'll get the wrong answers. This is a mathematical triviality in many ways, but we've got to keep it in mind because it means that that shortcut route that needed to be done in the past but does not need to be done in the age of computers it leads you to the wrong answer. We need to take into account the range of possibilities that occur so we get the right answers. Simulation is the way to go in terms of an easily accessible way to look at the sample the space of the possibilities by looking at a thousand or so uh, different scenarios that might occur. That's takeaway number one, the reality of uncertainty. Takeaway number two is that there are remarkable benefits from flexible design for dealing with uncertainty. In general, they give you to win-win situations at a lower cost. Less loss and more gain, less investment compared to alternative choice without the flexibility, and what's not to like. That is the message. Now, their actual results depend upon the situation, the level of uncertainty, and so forth and so on, but it is a route to explore. If you do not explore that possibility, you don't tend to get the best that you possibly could, and that best may be significantly higher than without the flexibility. There's two references on it that I could share with you. The first one is this book of uh, a few years back uh, by the MIT Press. It's Flexibility in Engineering Design which I co-authored with my colleague Stefan Schultes at Cambridge University in the UK. And the second one is coming out uh, in 2018, very soon now, or maybe, but when you listen to that, it's already come out, and it is push, push, published by Wiley in the UK, and it's flexibility and real estate valuation under uncertainty. And it's a practical guide for developers. That is, in it, we look not just at the principles, but it includes all kinds of uh, Excel spreadsheets and software that look at the various conditions uh, that may occur before designers. So it's a roadmap of how to apply this in the real estate world.